This presentation is about parameter Keller, which characterizes the oxygen supply from gas bubbles to the cells of microorganisms during the fermentation in bioreactors. In principle, this parameter uh, determines largely the efficiency of bioreactors. Here in this graph is the example of fermentation we can see the problem of oxygen supply. This can be observed especially in pilot and industrial scale fermentations. You can see that during intensive growth phase, dissolved oxygen concentration falls below set point. Despite mixer rotation speed and airflow rate have achieved their maximal operational values. This means that Barter cannot supply the required amount of oxygen in this case. Now we see that oxygen availability plays an important role in aerobic fermentation processes. But how we can evaluate uh, the fermentation system in terms of oxygen uh, transfer and how we can deduce uh, what power after design is better for oxygen transfer. In order to characterize uh, the power after efficiency regarding oxygen transfer, a parameter known as KLA or volumetric oxygen mass transfer coefficient is used. So here today we have a special guest uh, from Barton's centers uh, who can share with us about his knowledge about KLA. Yes. Hi, hi, thank you, thank you for having me. What is generally is KLA? So uh, basically the volumetric oxygen mass transfer coefficient uh, is a parameter that uh, shows us how uh, efficiently our oxygen is transferred from the gas phase to the liquid phase. So, and if we are uh, specifically talking about uh, biotechnology and uh, uh, microorganism growth, so K KLA often in uh, biotechnological engineering is uh, a means of characterizing a bioreactor on uh, how well it is performing in uh, supplying oxygen to the process. So basically, uh, you, usually people see it like this. So if KLA is higher, then the system is more efficient in providing oxygen to the cells. The notion of KLA arises from the two film theory, which postulates that the mass transfer between two phases takes place through a boundary layer between those two phases. The rate of diffusion of a component between phases is dependent on the mass transfer coefficient. For liquids, this coefficient often is written as KL. And so the total rate of oxygen transfer from the gas phase to the liquid phase in biotechnology is often called oxygen transfer rate or simply OTR. Overall, the OTR is uh, dependent not only on the mass transfer coefficient, but also on the contact area between both phases. So if we are talking about introducing air as a means of aeration for specific biotechnological processes, uh, the oxygen transfer rate will be dependent on the mass transfer coefficient and on the contact area between the air bubble and the fermentation medium. Another important aspect of KLA can be described by the following equation. So this equation shows us that the rate of change of the oxygen concentration in the cultivation medium is dependent on the mass transfer coefficient and the difference between the current oxygen concentration and the maximal possible or sometimes called equilibrium concentration. Simultaneously, the rate of change of the oxygen concentration is equal to the difference between the oxygen transfer rate, the OTR, and the oxygen uptake rate, 
by the microorganism cells. So by looking at this equation, we can easily see that if the oxygen transfer rate is higher than the oxygen uptake rate, the medium will inevitably get saturated by oxygen until reaching the equilibrium concentration. In another case, if we observe a completely different situation where the oxygen uptake rate is larger than the oxygen transfer rate, the oxygen concentration will fall below a required level, which would, un would be unsuitable for supporting microorganism growth. But how we can evaluate uh, KLA or different biomarkers? This could be important, for example, if we are starting to select uh, the requirements uh, of manufacturing a biorector based on uh, uh, results in a lab scale. Uh, so basically this question is, uh, is I believe, most important uh, for bioreactor manufacturers or for people who are selecting a system for uh, like uh, scale up who don't know actually how the system will perform. So, but nowadays there are two major methods how you can evaluate the volumetric oxygen mass transfer coefficient. So, there's the, the, those can be divided into two groups, the numerical methods, or like say, theoretical evaluation. And uh, the second part is like performing real experiments and determining the KLA value experimentally. The theoretical KLA evaluation methods are usually applied by bioreactor manufacturers and users which are trying to scale up their biotechnological process to larger scale bioreactors. By using the theoretical evaluation methods, we can estimate how well the system will perform and what design considerations should be taken into account when constructing the bioreactor. One of the most widely applied methods of correlating KLA with different bioreactor working modes is the empirical correlation proposed by Van Reed in 1979. He proposed to correlate the volumetric oxygen mass transfer coefficient in the steroid tank bioreactor with the specific power input and superficial gas velocity. Although the correlation proposed by Van Reed was quite adequate in predicting KLA over a broad range of specific power input values, people soon began to realize that another term should be added to this equation. The remaining term was viscosity. So the modern modification of the original Van Reed equation looks like this. Here the constants C, alpha, beta and delta all incorporate the geometry of the vessel, like mixer rotors, baffles and other parts. This means that in order for us to use this equation for say scale-up calculations, we first of all acquire a dataset on KLA versus the specific power input superficial gas velocity and viscosity, and determine the empirical constant C, alpha, beta and delta. Then we assume that the scale of bioreactor will be geometrically similar to our initial bioreactor. Finally, by knowing the operation conditions of the larger bioreactor, we can begin to estimate what the volumetric oxygen mass transfer coefficient could be. Although, we should be quite careful in how we use dimensioned estimates when trying to predict the conditions in real cultivation or fermentation processes. Any difference in the medium chemical composition or bioreactor inner geometry can significantly increase the deviations of the predicted versus real KLA coefficient values. If we are talking about experimental KLA determination methods, the basic approach on obtaining the KLA value of a specific bioreactor is by firstly uh, lowering the current oxygen concentration to a certain level. This can be done either by supplying nitrogen, which strips the oxygen from the medium, or simply by switching off gas supply during a running cultivation process as to lower the oxygen concentration by microorganism respiration, basically. And so, uh, when the concentration of oxygen is lowered to a certain point, the gas supply is switched back on and uh, 
the data on the oxygen increase versus time is gathered. By using those, that data, we can estimate what is the current value of the volumetric oxygen mass transfer coefficient. But how KLI depends on barter design and what the actions could be during the real cultivation processes. I mean, if uh, KLI is higher, we will be as always uh, the macroism uh, grows also better. Well, it's quite a complicated question. Uh, yes, first of all, KLA can significantly depend on the bioreactor design. And uh, also, uh, not always, KLA, higher KLA is better. KLA is significantly influenced by the bioreactor's inner geometry. For example, KLA can be significantly influenced by both the sparger geometry and the agitator's geometry. By, for example, increasing the orifice size of the sparger, we can obtain bubbles of a significantly larger size. In result, the contact area between the gas phase and the liquid phase decreases. Thus, KLA values drop. On the other hand, if we reduce the orifice size, we get bubbles with, of a smaller size. Thus, the total contact area between the gas and the liquid increases and the KLA value also increases. Additionally, by changing the, for example, rotor's design, we can significantly influence the turbulence in the liquid. If we are talking about is higher KLA always better, for specific biotechnological processes? Well, the answer is quite complicated because sometimes if significantly larger KLA values are required, only by increasing the agitation rate, we cannot obtain significant increases in microorganism growth because induced stress can influence the cell membranes and basically lead to cell lysis and death. As a result, influence the KLA values. This was a general introduction to KLA. If you would like to learn more about uh, theoretical calculations and experimental methods, please visit our website.